man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see them. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Nursery Rhyme Murders. Brookside Home is a private sanitarium located in a densely wooded area in the suburbs. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening as Superintendent Alfred Foster walks down the corridor on his way to visit one of his patients. Good evening, Bert. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks, Dr. Foster. I've been waiting for you. You should be asleep by now, Bert. Oh, I, I've been waiting for you to come and read to me. Well, we can't read to you every night. But you promised. You said if I ate all my supper, you'd read a story to me. And, and I eat it all, Dr. Foster. Every bit of it. The cereal and everything. Read to me now, please. We told you, Bert, that after you'd been here a while, we'd have to stop reading to you at night. You're not going to read to me? You're tired tonight. A little feverish, too, I think. I just go to sleep, and in the morning... We'll... I won't. I won't. You promised to read me a bedtime story. No, no. And now you no, broke no. your promise. Bert, Bert, you mustn't get excited like You that. broke your promise. Bert. Stay where you are. Don't, don't come any nearer. You're bad. And I'm going to hurt you. Bert, no, no. Dad, take, take your hands off my throat. Orderly, orderly. I'll make you read me one. Make orderly, you. hurry. What is it, Dr. Foster? What? Bert. Get him off me. Quick, that loose will hurry. Let him go. Let him go. There. Now stay over there, Bert. Thank you, Andrews. That was close. He promised to read to me. And he broke his promise. You want me to get one of the other orderlies, Dr. Foster? I know, that's all right, Andrews. But I just got a little excited. I can handle him all right. I don't know. I think we ought to send him over to the violent ward. You better not send me away. You better not. Oh, now, Bert. You better not try and send me away. If you do, I'll hurt you all. I'll hurt you all bad. <laughs> Quiet, Bert, and go to sleep. Three o'clock. I want a drink of water, Andrews. I want a drink of water. Go to sleep, Bert. Please, Andrews. Please. Uh, all right, Bert, just a second. Okay, here's your water. I was awful thirsty. Uh, here you are. Thanks, Andrews. Thanks! Now, give me those keys. No, you don't. Give them to me. Now, I got the keys. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out. Andrews. I'm Harvey Andrews' wife. Oh, yes. Hello, Mrs. Andrews. Is my husband there? I'm sorry, Mrs. Andrews, but he isn't in. All the orderlies are out on the ground hunting for Bert Eustace. He escaped last night, you know. Well, that's just it, operator. Our cottage is at the north end of the ground. I understand Eustace is violent. I I'm here all alone, and, well, I'm frightened. I don't know what we can do. I'll tell Mr. Andrews to phone you when he gets back here. Well, all right. Thanks. Not at all. Goodbye, Mrs. Andrews. Goodbye. I know it's presuming on our acquaintance, but I want to thank you and Miss Lane for coming to my office this morning when I phoned. Not at all, Fred. Glad to be of service. The fact is, I need your help desperately. You see, Lamont, I'm a psychiatrist, not a criminologist. 
I don't think it's a case for the police, but I do need help in trying to find this escaped patient. And the searching party found no trace of Bert Eustace last night, Dr. Fox? No, Miss Lane. He's still at large. I feel pretty badly about it, too. Bert was showing signs of violence. In fact, he attacked me yesterday. But instead of sending him to the violent ward, I kept him here for observation. Then you think he's capable of being a killer? I'm afraid so, Miss Lane. What kind of a case was this patient, Fred? Well, not fundamentally a criminal type, but extremely unbalanced emotionally. During his periods of irrationality, he, he reverted to his childhood and lived in a complete juvenile world. What do you mean by that? But he went to bed when it got dark. He ate his cereal faithfully and insisted that I read bedtime stories and nursery rhymes to him. Bedtime stories yes. and nursery rhymes? How have you been handling the case? Trying to find out as much as I can about his background. Especially his childhood. Any luck? Well, I haven't been able to get much out of Bert himself, but his father has given a pretty good lead. His father? Yes. He's a well-to-do but eccentric old man. He used to come to visit his son devotedly every week. Recently, he's been coming less and less. You think Bert has some sort of a father complex? Perhaps his father's been neglecting him lately? And... Yes. He's, he's become more and more unbalanced until he reached the breaking point and decided to escape. Yes. Something like that, Lamont. Bert is... Doctor. Dr. Foster. Yes, what is it? What's the matter? Mrs. Andrews. Harvey Andrews' wife was murdered in a cottage last night. What? Right. They just found a strangle of death. But the rest of it, I... Uh, doesn't make sense. What doesn't make sense? The killer carried a body upstairs and left it in the fireplace. This is horrible. This poor woman's body curled up in the fireplace like this. Very strange resting place. Yes. Notice one other thing, Fred. Yes? Killer took the shoes off the corpse. But why? Why did he take her shoes off? Why did he carry her body upstairs and put it in the fireplace? It doesn't make sense. Contrary, Margot, it does make sense. What do you mean? The torture depths of Bert's mind, he acted with a terrible logic. I don't think I follow you, Lamar. Neither do I. You said this man Bert loved bedtime stories and nursery rhymes. Yes, right? that's right. Well, in my opinion, he killed this woman right out of a mother goose rhyme. What? Listen to this, Margot. Little Polly Flinders sat among the cinders, warming her pretty little toes. Come on. The dead woman's first name was Paul. Yes, and she sat among the cinders. That would mean the fireplace, Margot. Yes, and warming her pretty little toes. No wonder the killer took her shoes off. Precisely. The clues are all in the rhyme. I wonder if it's only the beginning. What do you mean, Lamar? I wonder if the killer's going to stop with his first murder, Margot. Because with all the Mother Goose stories there are... Death can rhyme many times. Oh, Lamont, and Miss Lane. I'm glad you're here. Came yeah, right out after we got your phone call, Fred. What's wrong? We haven't been able to locate Harvey Andrews, the husband of the dead woman. But it's midnight now. You mean you've been looking for him all day? Yes, Miss Lane, ever since his wife's death. Andrews was out trying to find Bert with the rest of the searching party, and now he's vanished. Hmm. A woman is killed and her husband disappears. Oh, pardon me, Lamont. Hello? This is Parks, Dr. Foster. Could you come out to the reception room for a minute? Yes. Yes, of course, Parks. Lamont, Miss Lane, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I'm going out to the reception room. Maybe the searching party has come in. Yes, of course. Mark, do you suppose Bert has killed the orderly as well as his wife? I don't know, Margot. Strange they haven't been able to locate him yet. Oh, it's Dr. Foster's phone, Mark. Yeah. I suppose I better answer. Mm. Hello? <laughs> Listen, Doctor. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. Where is the little boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the haystack, fast asleep. <laughs> Who is this? Who is this? Hello. Hello. What's the matter, Lamont? Who was that? Bert Eustace, Margot. Come on, I think we'd better get outside fast. Where are we going? To the farm and back to the sanitarium. Who do you expect to find out there? I wouldn't be surprised, Margot, if we found Little Boy Blue. <laughs> Wandering around the grounds in the middle of the night without Dr. Foster. Dr. Foster will be very glad we left without him, Margot. I'll hold the flashlight up. Right. Isn't there a haystack next to the barn? Yes, Lamont. Come on, Margot. But careful, we may be walking into a trap. Here we are. Here's a pitchfork. I'm going to start digging. Lamont. What? 
to inspect the fly. Keller's given us a clue, Margot. If I'm not wrong... Good Lord. There's a body under this head. It's Andrews. And he's wearing a blue orderly's jacket. Yes, Margot. Little boy blue. Only this little boy blue isn't just fast asleep. He's dead. He's... We won't listen. <laughs> Yes, we ran after him, but lost him in the darkness, Fred. First it was little Polly Flinders, then it was little boy Blue. I wonder who Burke will pick next. I can guess his next victim, Miss Lane. Who? Myself. You? I'm afraid of the same thing, Fred. Bert hated me as much as he hated Andrews. As I see it, he went to Andrews' house to kill him and found Andrews wasn't there and killed his wife instead. Then he caught Andrews in the grounds later and killed him and buried him under the haystack. Yes, and logically... Well... I come next. You could be right. I'm afraid I am. Oh, we've got to find this man. We've got to. The police have a statewide dragnet out for him now. Yes. They're so busy covering the highways and terminals. I wonder if they haven't given the most logical place a very fast examination. The most logical place? Yes. Bert's home. I think we'd better have a talk with Bert's father, Lamont. I wouldn't be surprised if he knew a great deal more about where his son was hiding. It's a good idea. Come on, Lamont. I'll get my thing. Well, it won't be necessary. Well, what do you mean? You're not going with us, Fred. It's not safe. Oh, but you I... You admitted yourself you're probably next on Bert's list. Yes, You're but... the psychiatrist. I'm the criminologist, remember? We'll phone you here at the office as soon as we've seen old man Eustace. Well, all right. Thanks, Lamont. Forget it. Come on, Lamont. Uh... Eustace, at Dr. Foster's suggestion, we decided to come here to see you. I see. I know you're as anxious to find Bert as we are, Mr. Eustace. Yes, I am, ma'am. Then if we could just step inside for a moment, Mr. Eustace, and talk to you. All right. All right, step inside. Thank you. Follow me into the parlor. This way. Monty really is an eccentric. See anything like this old mausoleum? No, and I don't think anybody else has for the last 50 years. Here we are. It's a little dusty. I haven't used the parlor for some time. Sit down. Please. Thank you. Uh, you live here all alone, Mr. Eustace? Yes. Yes, I do. Lived here all alone ever since Bertram went away. I miss him very much. And before that, Mr. Eustace? Before that, it was just Bertram and I. Bertram's mother has been dead almost 40 years. I see. You know, of course, that Bert left the hospital. Yes. Yes, I know. You read it in the papers, I suppose? No, I didn't read it in the papers. But I know it, though. I know it. You couldn't by any chance tell us where Bert is now, could you, Mr. Eustace? I don't know, Mr. Cranston. I don't know. What was that? What was that noise? Must have been the cat. She must have knocked something over upstairs. Those are hardly the footsteps of a cat, Mr. Eustace. Well, they aren't, are they? Must be someone else in the house. I think there is. And I better find out. Come back is. here, Mr. Eustace. Mr. Eustace! Quick, Lamont. He's locking the door. Mr. Eustace! He bolted it. He certainly has, Margot. We're locked in. <laughs> Looks as though we were too slow. Yes, while we're breaking out of the parlor down there, both Mr. Eustace and Bert have disappeared. Come on, Margot, we've got to make sure. We'll go down this corridor. Stay close to me. Don't worry, Lamar. Oh! What's the matter, darling? I just ran into another of those darn spider webs. Spider web won't hurt you. Maybe not, but there was a spider in the middle of this one. No wonder Bert was unbalanced living in this old mansion. Yes, with a queer old duck like Eustace for a father. He's certainly... Margot, listen. 
Bert. He's upstairs in the floor above us. Oh! Come on, Margo, down the end of this corridor here. Must be a flight of stairs there. Here the stairs. Lamont, <laughs> he's up there. Top of the stairs. Goosey, goosey, gander. Where shall I wander? Upstairs and downstairs. And in my lady's chamber. There I met a man who would not say his prayers. I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. Lamont, it must be Mr. Eustace, the poor old man. Wait a second, we'll have a look. Here's the flash. Maybe the old boy is... What's the matter? Margot, this isn't Mr. Eustace. It isn't? No. It's Bert. But Lamont, old Mr. Eustace couldn't have just vanished into thin air. It looks as if he did, Margot. We certainly went over every inch of the house. Do you really think we can pick up his trail at Dr. Forster's house? That's the most logical place to look for him now. Oh, well, that's Fred's place up ahead. Mm. Here we are. That's you, darling. Thanks. Now, if we can just... What's the matter? Well, I saw something in the car headlights. What? Figure of a man back there behind the garage. Looked like old man used to... Oh, come on. Margo, I'm going around back. You go into Fred's house. Tell him I was delayed. Careful, darling, please. That old man is a crazy killer. Shadow is going to set a trap, Margot. This time, I think the crazy killer has spoken his last nursery rhyme. You see? Yes. I saw the same figure Lamont saw when I stopped to pick up the mail. Old Mr. Houston. Yes, and he left this in the mailbox. What is it? A note. Listen. Dr. Foster went to Gloucester in a shower of rain. He stepped in a puddle up to his middle and never went there again. Then old Mr. Eustace is here. Lamont did see him. He him. must have. It must mean that that crazy killer is going to creep into this house and murder me in the night. He's out of his mind. None of us is safe anymore. We're all... Why, this is strange. What is it? The killer really is close. Here's another note. Here on my desk. Eustace must have slipped in through the window and left it. Another note? Yes. And the odd part about it is, it's addressed to you. To me? Yes. Read it. See, saw, Marjorie Daw. Jackie shall have a new master. He shall have but a penny a day. Because he can't work any faster. I, I don't understand. Marjorie Daw. It's almost like Margot. You mean the killer? I mean, I'm afraid he means you, Miss Lane. Margot. Marjorie. Very close, aren't they? Close enough for all practical purposes. Dr. Foster, why are you looking at me like that? It's a nice rhyme, isn't it? It has a swing to it. I, I... See, so. Marjorie Daw. Jackie shall have a new mask. He shall have but a penny a day because he can't work any faster. You're the nursery rhyme killer. Yes, Miss Lane, I am. I love nursery rhymes. <laughs> oh, what a hubbard. Went to a cupboard to get a poor dog, a bone. Stay away from me. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. Stay away. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Wait. Eat up, eat up, pumpkin, eat up. No. These four Marjorie. <laughs> Who's in this room? I don't see anyone. Someone, someone I can't see. Who are you? You like to hear a little nursery rhyme, Dr. Foster? Who are you? I have a little shadow that goes in and out with me. What can be the use of him is more than I can see. Stop! Very, very like me from the heels up to the head. And I see him jump before me when I jump into my bed. Stop it! Stop it! I'm going mad! You're mad already, Foster. Your mind has been clouded by the dark shadows you profess to study. Who are you? Who are you? The shadow, Foster. The shadow here to see justice done. Shadow? <laughs> you thought you could blame these murders on Bert and then on his father. 
You became so obsessed with his case that your own mind broke under the strain. Uh, uh, let me out of here. I've got to get out of here. No, Foster. The state has a place for you. A place where never again will you be allowed loose among society. A place where you can safely recite nursery rhymes to your heart's content. <laughs> the whole story, Margot. Foster wasn't a doctor at all. He was just a clever quack who outsmarted himself. He became so obsessed with abnormal cases such as Bert Eustace that he became unbalanced himself. Is that it? That's right, Margot. Bert's escape must have been the snapping point for Foster's mind. He went on a rampage, blaming everything on Bert. And when we went to see old man Eustace, Foster was afraid we'd find Bert, get the truth out of him. So he had to get rid of Bert and and shift the blame to the father. When Foster was the one Polly Andrews saw, and it was his voice we heard on the phone. Both Bert and his father were completely innocent. That's right, Martha. Well, I still don't see why he called you in on the case when he was guilty, Lamar. Well, that's how he outsmarted himself. He didn't want to risk calling in the authorities, but he did need an outsider to verify his alibis and collaborate his statements. I'm a criminologist. We've met before, and it seemed like the logical choice. Mm, I see. Well, after that case, there's one thing I'm sure of. No, oh, what's that, Margaret? If I ever have to read to a child again, it's going to be from the Encyclopedia Britannica. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow. Ha, 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 ha